Octong, the walk for YouTube, and uh, some uh, special friends today. <laughs> it's your pal Noni here today, showing you something a little bit different from my usual channel affairs. As you probably noticed from the title of this video, this is not a Let's Play proper. So don't freaking judge me, look at this. Um, no, this is less of a Let's Play and more of a Let's Explain. For my video, so that's practically one the same. Oh, shut up, me. Anyway. This is Victoria 2. Now, this is also why I didn't update Red Orchestra 2 yesterday, because I got a request to let's explain this game. No, nope, can't say that with a straight face, that's a bold-faced lie, it's just a general, hey, somebody make a good let's play of this game that's explanatory. Because, uh, sorry, Volks, other Volks of YouTube, who are probably my competitors and probably going to have me lynched for saying this, but apparently yours aren't instructional of the... So, this is a let's play... This a let's explain. I'm going to go into pretty great detail about just about everything. Now, the first and most important part of Victoria 2 is what country you play as. What country you play as, as you can presume, will basically determine every single course of action you take throughout the game, what your decisions are, what your objectives are, etc, etc, etc. Now, as uh, many people on the forum have pointed out to uh, commoners asking questions, it is a bad idea to play as nine-tenths of the countries you'll see here. Either they're too large to be easily played as, like uh, France, Prussia, or Austria, where you have to deal with too much and uh, you're surrounded by enemies, or, conversely, they're so tiny and weak, like uh, Greece, most little minor Italian states up here, Tunisia, and Algeria, that you'll get ruthlessly curb stomped. If you by chance absolutely must, must play in Europe, try playing as something where you won't get involved in too many wars, like uh, two Sicilies, Belgium, and we'll get into a major war first, but they'll have the biggest country in the world at their back almost immediately, S or Sweden. Do not play as the main three you see, in, or main five actually you see in this picture, UK, France, Spain, Persia, or Austria, and especially not Russia, because uh, first time playing this game, you'll probably find that's a little too much to handle. Another good place to start out with if you're uh, more of a journeyman to RTSs is the Ottoman Empire, because that's a, uh, that's what I call a basic objective country, where your objective is just to get a few cores back from Egypt down here, Whoop. assert your supremacy over the east and south, and uh, perhaps even take back the Greek lands if you're feeling particularly adventurous, however they are well defended by other great empires. However, the best place to start out, I see it, will be here, America. Don't play as Texas or Bolivia though, or unless you want to lose. The nice thing about the, about the New World is that there are hardly ever many earth-shattering great powers here. The USA will probably become one, uh, Canada might if it, if it goes free, and Mexico if it, if it beats the US enough can. For the most part though, you'll be wanting to play as the United States of Central America, Ecuador, Chile, Argentina, or Peru. These are countries that will, uh, that will largely not get in much, will not get in <coughs> bad trouble throughout the game. I mean, you can still declare wars, and that's basically mostly your action down here, as well as colonializing, which is something we'll get to later. But, uh, that's about it. Otherwise, you have the Orange Free State and Transvaal, where you're relatively safe against enemy invaders for a long while, and, uh, you've got a good position to, to, uh, basically found a industrial empire. Or Siam up here, if you're feeling a bit more confident in one more challenging game for yourself. Though, uncivilized nations like, uh, Siam or China here are more for advanced people only. Because, uh, basically any other non-uncivilized nation can just take land for you for practically free. Now, basically, what, what empire you want is going to be, uh, it's going to be whatever kind of playstyle you like. If you just want to sit back and industrialize, as I said, Orange, Orange Free State, Transvaal, or Belgium, 
If you want to uh, fight a lot and get used to the combat aspects of the game, you want the Ottoman Empire, or um, depending on how you see it, the two Sicilies. If you want to just manage, if you want to juggle all your politics, uh, you want to play as the United States of Central America, or the uh, Spanish-speaking Latin American countries mentioned. You can also play as Haiti if you uh, if you just don't want to fight and just want to settle down and get used to the game. That's a uh, very good country if you just kind of want to sit back and see how the controls work without using the uh, very awkward tutorial. So that has been my uh, country choosing. Now let's get on to the part where we actually make stuff happen, the actual game itself. And uh, as soon as we load here, this game does take a little bit to load. Do note that my uh, copy of the game does have an unremovable DLC, which I cannot get rid of because Steam is fun. Now, as soon as you get into the game, to start off, you should do a few things. First hand, use your national focus. I cannot stress this enough. If you don't use your national focus on whatever you want to start out with, then you'll basically be... For lack of a better term, you'll basically be playing half a game. Because you'll be missing so much from missing that opportunity. Basically, if you want to industrialize and introduce capitalists, or uh, artisans will work early on, and craftsmen. If you just want to fight, encourage soldiers, officers, and armament, basic, and uh, shipping industry. Otherwise, use whatever fits for the situation. I tend to be a militarist, militaristic saber waver, so I tend to start out with natural focus for soldiers. Because, uh, admittedly, that is one of the better ones. Because you see this up there? This is your military screen and display. As you can see, you have a very finite number of soldiers with um, some backup conscripts, which won't do as, as well as battle. Essentially, you will always want to have about a good number of troops depending on your position. In Italy, like we are, 14 is fo is more than enough unless you're considering colonializing, which in Italy is pretty much your only job. But, I was not lost if you decide to sit back and industrialize because you picked a good nation, didn't you? The Two Sicilies has a very high population and can script a lot of people. Now, uh, Victoria 2's combat style is admittedly something more based on uh, numbers than actual unit strength. I'm not saying that it's a good idea to just build the militia style of regulars and just form your enemies to death because that's a Frenchy method. Instead, uh, it's a better idea to have a large amount of tr tr large amount of conscripts, and that can just, they'll just go up over time. Now, so other things you want to do is, see in here, balance your budget. Basically, the uh, budget is conveniently listed in basically a straight line of priority. By God, always have the national stockpile as high as you can. This is really, really important. You cannot do anything if you have a low national stockpile value. And it's generally a bad idea, if nothing else, if you can't maintain 50% soldiers, and uh, national stockpile to start out playing as a country. Um, you also have your taxes. Now, it, now uh, if you notice, the rich people will pay less tax than the uh, middle class and they less than the poor people. You could hand wave this as saying that the rich avoid their taxes and such, but it's more, but, uh, it's more accurately, there's basically always going to be considerably less rich people in your country because if there were more of them, no, they couldn't be considered rich, so no, could they? Um, you can also collect tariffs. If you're planning on industrializing, this is a bad thing, but uh, if you're balancing them, then uh, don't be afraid to turn on tariffs. As uh, I see it, it is usually better to have uh, taxes on and tariffs off if you're an industrial country, and tariffs off and taxes on if you're going to be more militaristic or balanced. Technology, your starting technology is also very important because basically it'll 
change the cost of your country forever. Good uh, kickoff technologies will be muzzle loaded rifles that allow construction of a new kind of unit, up your attack, and I lower your combat width. We'll talk more about combat next video. Um, in fact, all of these are pretty good except maybe iron muzzle loaded artillery, depending on your nation. In the case of your navy, maybe it's just me, but typically my navy can. Turns out, with the AI, it's basically either gigantic. 9001 stack war fleets that are basically not going to die ever, or uh, an uncivilized nation stinky one clipper ship transport. So navies are a little less important. However, later on, um, oil-driven ships will be uh, will give you ridiculous well steam turbine and oil-driven ships will give you ridiculous amounts of. Uh, Excuse me, military score, which as you see up here, contributes to your final score. And, uh, it's certainly a good idea to have the uh, best ship type of your time. Because, uh, as you'll figure out later, they are pretty important for a lot of things. But, uh, I would not recommend starting out on a naval technology unless you're really going to be playing naval battle for most of the game. Which, especially early on, I don't really recommend. Commas. If you do start out in a nation where you're going to get bad income, with the Ottoman Empire being the only example where it'd be a good idea to start with, Kamas is your friend. This is the most important goddamn technology in the game. If you start out without this tech, always, 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 unless you're under excruciating circumstances not to, research freedom of trade. For culture, nothing's nothing's really that important in culture yet. If you're looking to zip line your way to a great power, which you shouldn't be if you're taking this guide, um, the aesthetics tree is for you, and if you just want a higher score, then it's always available. Philosophy is another very important tech tree. Basically, every level of philosophy you get will, bas will speed up your research considerably. That's always, always a good thing. Always gotta love fast research. Social thought also helps your education, which in turn helps your efficiency. Though it does make your colonial migration go up, and that can be a good thing or bad thing depending on how you see it. Political thought increases your national focuses until you get to nationalism and imperi imperialism, which is basically the uh, second most important technology in the game. That's also pretty good. Psychology, usually don't even bother with this tree. It's more of a, if you have nothing else to research, then uh, go for it. Industry. You almost never want, as with Navy, you almost never want to kick off a game search, researching a uh, industry tech unless it's one of these two up here. Later on, the industrial tree does get really powerful. Same with, same with the uh, chemistry and electricity over here. But um, metallurgy and infrastructure are really kind of only that important if you're pure in, if you're pure industrial. I mean, it's a good idea to have railroads, but. But uh, level seven is kind of is kind of uh, overdoing it if you're not pure industrial, because at that point it's basically just um, industry bonuses. Got all that? Good, because that's part one of how to play Victoria Two, or Anani explains. Come back next time when we'll be talking more about the warfaring aspects of the game. See you soon.